Hi, everyone. So yeah, like Jeff mentioned, I'm Rebecca. I graduated from Stanford back in 2015, so a little over a year ago. Um, I did my undergraduate in mathematical and computational science, MCS, and then did a co-term in MSNE, Management Science and Engineering. So um, straight after I graduated in 2015, I joined APT full-time as a business consultant. Um, before then, I had actually been an intern with them as well the summer after my junior year. So at this point, I've been at APT as a business consultant for a little over a year, um, if you include my internship, almost a year and a half. And go working in the financial district, living in the city, um, and it's been a great experience so far. Definitely miss Stanford, but um, can't complain about the real world either. Yeah. So being away from Stanford, actually, so being away from Stanford for about a year-ish now, is there anything that you miss from, you know, just being away from the farm? I'd say the biggest thing I miss is um, being able to live, like, right next to all of your friends. You know, you're in the dorm or in a house or somewhere, and you can just walk out into the hallway, and there's people there um, to make plans with. Uh, luckily, there's a lot of Stanford people in San Francisco, too, so still get to hang out with a lot of Stanford friends. It just takes a little bit more organizing um, and coordination. Um, also miss sort of the warmer weather that <laughs> happens to be down in Palo Alto. San Francisco can be a little foggy and cold sometimes. All right, so in cold San Francisco, where you're actually having a good time at APT, it seems, tell us a little bit about APT um, and then your role also as a, as a business consultant. Sure, so APT is a software company that does data analytics for big consumer-facing clients. So companies like Walmart or like a Starbucks, um, they license our software. Um, what APT also has is a team of consultants that then work with these clients to basically help them use the software in the best way possible. Um, so APT, what our software does is it's all about um, business experimentation. So someone at a company like a Walmart has an idea of something they want to try out or something that they think will help improve their business. And instead of just implementing that idea everywhere, um, companies tend to want to test it and hopefully determine whether or not it's actually a good idea. And so that's what our software really helps them do. It helps them design the test and then actually analyze the test to say, this idea really incrementally helped our sales this much. Um, so we started in the retail and restaurant business mostly, but now we've kind of grown into a ton of different industries. So we're also working in finance, we're working in um, banking, we're working in healthcare, so getting into more of the R&D, the research and development side of things as well, because A-B testing is something that um, really occurs kind of across the board, and our software is applicable to a lot of those things. Um, so as a business consultant, like I mentioned, what we're doing is working, actually working hand-in-hand -hand with the clients who use the software. So that's anything from managing their data, um, making sure that you know every all the data that we receive can be smoothly implemented in our software, to running the analysis, determining the success of the test, um, to building those client relationships, um, working with those clients and saying, you know, these are the types of testing ideas you should be doing. This is how we could be implementing them, and this is what's going to give us sort of the the, the biggest impact at the end of the day. And now that we've seen this test, kind of what are the business implications? So we're involved in a lot of the process um, of making sure that companies are really taking advantage of this whole test and learn approach and methodology. And what majors um, are people coming from when, when you're a business consultant? Do you have to be from a technical major? Can, can you not? Yeah, that's a great question. So we ha get business consultants from sort of all different backgrounds. Um, there's people who are very heavy in the math and statistics side, um, since definitely a lot of what APT does is based in statistics. Um, but it's not just that. Um, we definitely get people from the entire opposite side of the spectrum, from history majors, sociology majors, or people that might have focused in econ or finance. Um, so we never really look for a particular major for business consultants. It's a job that can be applicable to, I think, a lot of people. Um, it's more about 
your problem solving skills, your communication skills, and just being able to kind of manage and prioritize sort of the different tasks. So um, there's all different types of majors where um, people can be successful here. And so uh, in, in working a lot with students here at Stanford, hear a lot about I want to make an impact in my internship or a first job out of college. So mm -hmm. can you tell us a little bit about um, maybe a project, something you've done at APT um, where you really felt, man, I really got to make an impact, something you're proud of there? Yeah, I mean, I think even as an intern, um, you're really thrown into uh, the situations you would be in as a full-time first-year VC where you're also getting some um, really great opportunities. When I say VC, I, I mean business consultant. We also have lots of acronyms like Stanford does. Um, so there's, I got a lot of those examples sort of early on. I know in my internship, I was part of a project for a um, really big brand name um, in retailers. And the way the project worked was that we would basically be doing analyses for them um, and then sort of getting back to them the results. And so, you know, after a few weeks of training and learning the software and everything about the client, um, it was immediately beginning to do analysis. And by the end, I had finished from beginning to end three different type of analyses. So one example of that was um, they wanted to sort of change the layout of how the products were placed on a shelf. And we were able to show that because they moved some things more to eye level and other um, maybe other items down to lower levels, we were pretty, um, we were able to see a pretty significant impact into their sales. And so then what that, after we found that out, I had the opportunity to actually present these findings to um, the people at this company working with these products and kind of show them the values. So it was really exciting that even as an intern, I got opportunity to um, sort of start the analysis, finish the analysis, put together um, the way we were going to present it and then actually present it myself um, and then see that change being implemented in the business as well. And as a full time, have had very similar um, situations as well. I'm actually meeting tomorrow with the CEO and the CFO of a really big apparel retailer um, and kind of showing them an analysis and being able to do that one year out of college is, I think, pretty awesome. Wow, so, so it seems like some really high impact work, um, really, and not being too long at APT, you're already um, really in it. So tell us a little bit about, um, just to step back there, at your internship experience. Mm -hmm. Add some color there for the students that are wondering what it's like and really wondering what they might gain, learn from, from a, a summer with APT. Yeah, so we invest a lot in our interns because first they make summer really exciting for us and then it's also just a great opportunity to get fresh eyes and a fresh perspective on the work that we're doing. Um, so the internship program is 10 weeks long and in San Francisco, um, you know, you'll start a few weeks after you finish classes and sort of the first week is really dedicated to training. There is a lot to learn with the APT software and the way we do our work, so there's time invested in making sure you're um, really learning all the basics, but it's really fun at the end of the week we do what's called a pilot simulation. So you kind of simulate running an analysis from beginning to end and then there's a whole like mock presentation where people in the office participate. So it's a really good way to kind of make you do an analysis right off the get-go, um, but obviously in a comfortable space with your coworkers. Um, after that, you get staffed on to your team. So for the summer, you'll, you'll usually be on two different client teams um, and you'll be working with them throughout the summer on basically whatever they're working on. So um, if it's a newer client, you might be helping them with analyses. Um, if it's maybe a more longer term client, you'll be helping with making sure that the relationship continues to stay steady. Um, but soon after you've learned sort of the basics and have gotten to know the client, you'll be really in the weeds in terms of um, working on the analyses, talking to the client directly over the phone, or um, usually you get an opportunity to travel over the summer as well. So most of the time an intern will travel once or twice to their client. Um, another really great part about the summer is that since we are headquartered in DC, they we think it is valuable for the um, interns to get the larger, broader office. So you do get a week 
where you get to go out to DC um, and travel, you know, within DC and see kind of the office um, there, get to meet some of the other departments that don't necessarily exist in San Francisco. So you get to meet people in engineering and um, marketing, sales, and of course meet all the other interns that are out there too. So it's a great opportunity to see kind of the, the broader scope of the company as well. And then at the end of your summer, you get to um, sort of present on the work that you've done and it's really a good way to wrap everything up. And of course, throughout the summer, there's lots of really fun social events. So when we, um, during my internship, we did like a food tasting tour. We went to Giants game. Um, we did like a, a biking trip out in Sonoma. Um, and I think there are a couple others, but it's like jam packed with fun things too. So high impact work, trip to DC, Giants games, Sonoma bike riding. Yeah. So if a student um, is now kind of hooked and says, okay, I wonder what the interview process is like and how's that gonna go? Describe us the interview process you went through it and made it and then any specific advice that you'd have for students too on that. Yeah, so um, for those interested in applying at APT, it's a pretty standard process. You apply online to both Handshake and our website. The application is just like your resume, transcript, and a cover letter. Um, and then from there, you can get invited back to interview, and there will be a round of on-campus interviews and then a final round in our San Francisco office. Um, the interviews consist of um, a short behavioral portion, just asking about who you are, what your strengths are, how you work with teams, um, and then consists of a, a case interview. So our cases are very, are very similar to um, the traditional management consulting cases. So there's lots of resources and opportunities to practice either online or through case workshops that happen on campus, um, or obviously with your friends or others who might be uh, applying to similar types of jobs. So it's it's really a, a pretty standard process. There's nothing um, too extraordinary with APT. I think the advice I have is to definitely spend time on um, your resume and your cover letter. We'll be on campus a few times so you can actually get to know, you know, not just myself, but some of the other business consultants and other people on, in, on the consulting side here in the San Francisco office. And that can really help sh shape your cover letter to something where it shows your interest. Um, and for the interview process, it's just practice. Um, practice your case interviews. Um, take advantage of those resources. We will be doing a case workshop on campus as well. So there's there's plenty of help out there, sort of just making sure you, you take the time to um, really feel comfortable with those types of interviews. And Rebecca will be on campus at the, the Fall Career Fair, as well as our Tech for, Tech for Liberal Arts event um, that evening. So if you'd like to meet her in person, um, next week would be the time. Um, so yeah. Rebecca, like, you know, students, I think, can feel pressured sometimes that they really need to compile a, um, a ton of experiences so that they'll be this kind of superstar candidate right when they graduate. Um, but now on the other side as an alumna, you know, what experiences did on your resume did you really leverage um, when it came to, to applying to jobs? Because there's so much out there, but what actually really mattered when in, 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 your, in your case? Just wondering. Yeah, that's a great question. I think a lot of it for me was actually the um, the leadership opportunities I had on campus. So I was involved in um, a lot of different groups and types of work on campus, a lot with the Latino community. So I staffed at Centro Chicano Latino. I was president of the Society of Latino Engineers. I worked at the admission office as a diversity outreach associate. So I was involved in things on campus and all of that gave me, um, you know, not just experience in terms of like working with other people and just really managing sort of a process from beginning to end, but also um, gave me valuable work experience in terms of being able to communicate with others, being able to um, deliver on tasks, and being able to work on teams, I think is a big part of it. So even though none of that had to do with like internship experience or past job experience, it was all just things on campus that I had been involved with because I wanted to, um, and that was what a lot of my sort of personal experience came from. Um, I think they, there is value in having some similar um, sort of 
business experience or work experience, but that doesn't necessarily need to come from an internship. There's a lot, again, of opportunities, whether it be on campus or, um, you know, some somehow else where there's maybe a in one of our events, um, that's all ways to basically get some of that business experience. And then, of course, if you have any of that internship experience prior to applying, that's always helpful, but it's definitely not necessary. All right. And, and so last couple questions here. Um, one, I guess in terms of aha moments, uh, you went through the, in the internship process. You're on full time now. I'm sure you had a good amount of options coming out of Stanford to look at. So what was it about APT that really made you go like, you know, this is the place I want to start my career? Yeah, so for me, um, what called my attention about APT was that it was that consulting experience where you got to work with a lot of industries and you got to um, work with different businesses and people in those businesses. but. In addition to that had sort of this entire tech and software element to it as well so I think a lot of the job that isn't necessarily apparent but is definitely there is our sort of engagement and work with the engineers and the people that actually make the software um, since we are primary users of the software as well as our clients who we talk to you know on a frequent basis we get a lot of input and we ourselves have a lot of input onto how to make this product better or what else we can make um, and so there is sort of a, an interesting product development component to this as well, where you're working with the engineers and saying, you know, these are some things that we can improve, um, helping them make some of those mock-ups of what it would look like and sort of testing what it would look like. So that's a really interesting element of it that definitely puts us more into the, I think, tech space of consulting. And then certainly kind of the data analytics and the patented algorithms that we have was something that me, for me personally, like drew my attention um, coming from a math background. Um, and I think the final thing is that I have always really liked teaching. So um, on campus, I tutored. Um, it's something that, you know, longer term, I hope to get more involved with. And interestingly enough, interestingly enough APT has quite a bit of a teaching component to it. Um, because at the end of the day, we want our clients to be able to use the software independently. And so part of that is sort of passing along the best practices, passing along um, sort of the right approach so that they can become more independent. And so that's that's really just teaching. And so that's another part of the job that really, to me, kind of showed the different hats I can put on. And that makes a day sort of never be boring. Awesome. And, and last question here. So for students um, kind of trying to figure out this career stuff, what are the North Stars uh, a student should have in mind when choosing a place to work? Um, again, since you're an alumna now, you, you have some, some good advice, I think. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I think one of the biggest things is the people. Uh, never You never really realize this until you start working, but you do spend a lot of time with your coworkers. Um, it's, you know, over half of your day when you're awake is usually spent with your coworkers. So um, making sure that those are people that you really get along with, that you fit into the culture, that you can envision yourself not only being successful in a career with, but also just having fun, I think is really important. Um, and that's something that a parent with APT when I met the people during the recruiting process and then of course during my internship I genuinely made friends out of it and um, as a full-time hire where we had kind of our new hire class like we hang out outside of work um, quite often because it's really those people that I enjoy spending time with um, so I think that's one part that should definitely be sort of a guiding point um, in choosing sort of a place to go after Stanford um, other than that, it's a place that will sort of hear your voice, um, help you grow, and give you those opportunities. And I think those are all really important things. I think a very tangible example with APT was um, 
I sort of, especially having come from Stanford and having worked with the, a lot of these Latino organizations, I really wanted to come to a place that would have that. And even though ABT didn't have that initially, um, I sort of had talked to people beforehand and they said, you know, it's a very open culture. You can have sort of, you can make whatever you want out of it. And so pretty recently we actually started a Latin network here at APT. So give, going to those places that will really um, bring you into the community, but, and not only that, but allow you to kind of make your own community um, or make your own paths or opportunities. I also think is um, sort of a worthwhile cause. All right. Well, thanks again, Rebecca, for making some time to chat with uh, students. Um, I'm sure they'll look forward to, to seeing you on campus uh, as you, you come next week. And I guess until next time, we will, uh, the next time on Unplugged at Stanford, we'll see you all then.